Dear viewers, students, audience, spectators, and all kinds of people who are watching me, I would like to welcome you to this virtual lecture presentation. Uh, how are you all? Hope you are actually not going to have a very good time because uh, this is a very crisis moment of pandemic. The universal coronavirus is actually gripping the whole world from every direction. But in spite of all these uh, barriers and uh, problems. I hope you are staying home, living safe with your parents and other people. Yes, uh, so today's lecture, I would like to welcome you again warmly. I am Mazhar Hawk. My email ID is given, mazhar.hawk at gmail.com. YouTube link is also given, Mazhar Hawk. And blog ID, hawkeye.blogspot.com. If, if you would like to tune in, you can get more of this from these video channels and my blogs. Uh, so it can be very much helpful for you to understand my all lectures. So let's get started. Dear students, today's topic, as I've already mentioned you, Silas Marner by George Eliot, one of the very famous novels written by her. And uh, this is a sort of Victorian novels uh, written in modern traits and characteristics. Uh, but this can never be called a Victorian modern novel. It's uh, completely a, a Victorian novel. So let's go to the next slide. Well, there are some very distinct and very, uh, what can I say, very uh, beautiful and illustrative pictures uh, taken from the covers of the books, uh, uh, from different books of different uh, publications like Penguin Publications. These pictures are collected. Macmillan's and they are actually uh, the text is uh, published from uh, great publications of the world like Macmillan book series, Penguins, ELBS and all this. So these are two very uh, great pictures taken from uh, the sources. Uh, you can see and you can guess what is the novel about and these are the two major characters. Uh, who will be playing their sheet roles in the novel. So let's see what actually happens. Uh, let's, uh, before I go, uh, let us have a look at the short life sketch of George Eliot. She is a British writer. Some people would like to call her uh, Mary Ann Evans, born 22 November 1819, died December 22. And she is an English Victorian novelist who developed the method of psychological analysis and characteristic of modern fiction. Her major works are Adam Beattie, The Mill on the Floss, Silas Marner, Middlemarch, and Daniel Deronda. Some major and minor characters of this novel. There are actually heaps of characters, a bunch of characters, but it's not possible to discuss all of them at this short span of time. Just uh, have a bird's eye view of some major characters. Silas Marner, she is the protagonist of this novel, a weaver, a pale bent man with protruding eyes and poor eyesight. He is an outcast from his original home and church at Rablu, lives in a lonely, miserly existence until his gold is stolen and a child comes to replace it. Ippi, the daughter of Godfrecas by a secret marriage, she is found by Silas in his cottage after her mother dies in the snow outside. He raises her as his own daughter, and of course, uh, Silas has given this baby girl a Hebziba. Got us, Nancy Lemeter. I uh, I would like to request uh, request the dear learners and participants and students to read the characters yourself because I have time constraint, so I'm not going to read all the uh, details of all the characters. Let's see some of the characters. Cass, one of very powerful character of this novel. Squire Cass, Priscilla Lameter, Mr. Lameter, Molly Farron, they are all very powerful and influential character of this novel. William Dane, Dolly Winthrop, Aaron, Mr. Massey, and Mr. Snell. Okay, so let us have a look at the uh, overview of Silas Marner. Silas Marner, the weaver of Revlu, is the third novel by George Eliot, published in 1861, an outwardly simple tale of a linen weaver. It's notable for its strong realism and its sophisticated treatment of a variety of issues ranging from religion 
to industrialization to economy community look at that all the words are very common and very much characteristic of the novel if you read this uh, paragraph or extract you will get a lot of similarities of this novel uh, the main name of the author is george Eliot, uh, but actually his name is mary ann evans published in 1861 original language was uh, english and major characters are nancy lameter Dunstan Cass, Godfrey Cass, Molly Farron, Silas Marner. Adaptations, Black Snake Moan, 2006. This novel has been adapted as Black Snake Moan in 2006. And uh, it is, uh, if you look at the jazz of this novel, it's a fiction novel. Uh, sometimes it can be treated as children's literature and speculative fiction. All of them are very important to understand. Let's go to the next slide background of the novel it's not possible to read the whole novel actually uh, you can read it yourself dear students i strongly suggest you to read the main uh, text of the novel not the uh, unabridged, uh, abridged version you just buy the unabridged or the real novel the main fiction and then you can start reading so background of the novel george Eliot is a thick uh, is a chick whose real name was mary ain uh, Marian, some people would like to call her Evans. Like uh, many women in her time, she published her novels under a man's name, so she would be taken seriously. Struck by a childhood memory of a linen weaver, Idiot became inspired to write this story as a short of as a sort of realistic legend. There are many important issues explored: the role of religion and faith in one's faith, the transformation of one's existence and beliefs. The importance of money versus the importance of love. George, or Mary Ain, wrote the f more famous novels, Middlemarch, The Mill on the Floss, and Ramulad. Those were his other great works or masterpieces, but this is, of course, one of them. Well, uh, let us read the story outline in brief. It's not possible to read the whole story or the whole summary, dear students, so I strongly suggest you to take a very glued look to the screen to get a very precise idea of the novel exposition the novel starts in the present and flashes back to when silas was a young man uh, in lantern Yard. in this religious community silas was revered had friends and fiance however he was soon framed by his best friends and expelled from the town he moved to revlu to begin a new life so this is the exposition that is this is the beginning or background of the novel it means the novel is going to start with this setting and background major conflicting uh, inflicting inciting conflict silas has been hurt badly so he has become a reclusive miser full of anger and despair this makes him the subject of rumors and lies as i told you this is a novel of chance and coincidence how social settings and surroundings and ambience can influence a man's life is the proper epitome of this novel now let us discuss the rising action readers are introduced to the cast family the squire and his three sons godfrey dunstan and bob godfrey the eldest son is hiding a scandalous secret which his brother dunstan is aware of and uses as a blackmail against godfrey Godfrey is secretly married to an opam addicted woman from a neighboring town. After squandering all his money and unable to go get more from Godfrey, Dunstan robs Silas Marner, leaving him with nothing for the second time in his life. But one night, Molly decides to get revenge on Godfrey by showing up with her child at the squire's party. She never makes it. Instead, she dies in the snow and her baby wanders to Silas, Silas's house. So what is the rising action? So we are going to reach the climax, but before going to climax, this is the action. That's why, that's why it's called rising action. Readers are introduced to the cast family, the squire and his three sons, Godfrey, Dunstan, and Bob. Godfrey, the eldest son, is hiding a scandalous secret, which his brother Dunstan is aware of and uses a blackmail against Godfrey. Godfrey is secretly married to an open addicted woman from a neighboring town. After squandering all his money and able to get more money from Godfrey, Dunstan robs Silas Marner. Actually, I have uh, read it in the previous slide. Sorry, I have repeated it. So let's go to the next one, Climax. This is the main uh, portion of the novel. Uh, that is, uh, when there is a climax, it means the 
story reaches at its peak that is the reaches at its height received that molly's death got for mary's sis to love nancy a woman he was courting direct during his marriage silas ends up raising the child as his own and it changes his life for the better he gains friends respect and a replacement for his robbed gold to love to love Godfrey, however, vows that he will never forget the child, Epi, and promises to keep an eye on her. After 16 years, Godfrey and Nancy, who are unable to have children of their own, try to take Epi from Silas. For the third time, Silas is faced with despair. Now is the falling action. The uh, action is going to fall or anticlimax. Unable to leave Silas, her true father, and the life she has known Epi now 18 passes on the true castle's offer to be their child. This makes Silas the happiest he has ever been and he knows now that he will trust her for the rest of his life. Silas also has gold returned to him after the castle family finds Johnston's dead family at the bottom of a dried up quarry, quarry near Silas' cottage with Silas' gold next to him. Now the resolution, it means that story is going to resolve its crisis with all things having been restored to him silas decides to go back to lantern yard to see if any light was shed on his innocence however when he and ep get there the town is gone after they return to revlu ep marries aaron winthrop silas ep and aaron live happily in silas cottage for years to come and for the rest of the days so dear uh, this is the story that I have just finished in brief and in a synopsis in a synoptic manner uh, I, I have already told you it's not possible to read the whole story in this short span of time but uh, you will read the whole text but I have tried to give you the main glimpse and main sense of the whole story uh, if you read the slides again and again you will get the whole taste of the novel okay uh, there are some lessons which I have already uh, told that uh, being a Victorian novelist Mary Ayn or George Eliot uh, didn't forget to give us some lessons for every readers what are they love not money is the basis for all happiness in life without love nothing else in life has meaning unexpected events can be powerful in the transforming a person's center life from one's behavior to one's view of life and the world. By adhering to a system of morality, one, feel, one will feel an inner calm and thus have the strength to carry on the, in the face of adversity. A clear conscience can alleviate all anxieties. Be honest with yourself and others. Having faith in the goodness of humanity is integral to keeping the goodness of humanity alive. But most important, we must show that belief through our daily actions. Consider the idea of Silas Marner as myth. Are we to view the story in realistic terms or legendary terms for both or both? This is a thinking question for you. You can think about the question after reading all the slides, after checking all the slides, and you can discuss it with your partner if you like. Okay, uh, there are very important symbols and themes used in this story, used in this novel. Uh, what are the themes that has been used in the novel? Class. Class is a major theme. Uh, different types of classes are used. Upper class, lower class, middle class, aristocratic class. Myth and folklore. Memory. Nature versus industry. Faith. Chance and coincidence. Community. Isolation and inclusion. So these are the themes which are uh, dispersed throughout the whole novel. And there are some symbols which are also very important to know the real, you know, twist of the story. What are they? Gold, hearth, loom, open door, rainbow in. So these are also symbolic. And uh, the writer has uh, very, ex in, a, in, her, in her expert hand and very delicately uh, used these themes and symbols uh, deliberately in order to give us a very clear picture of the Victorian society after industrialization. Uh, 
some sort of break for you to see the picture of uh, this is uh, the picture that is very much related to the uh, story of this novel. You can see the cottage uh, in which uh, Silas used to live with Epi at the end of her fag end of her life, uh, fag end of his life, and the bottom is the picture of uh, you know Silas and Epi as they become the real father and daughter, but actually they are not. And the right corner is the picture of the marriage, marriage uh, at the end of our Silas's uh, life, uh, a happy marriage uh, ended the novel, uh, which is uh, very much significant to the happy ending the writer has tried to uh, enforce in the novel. Okay, uh, this is the final questions for you. I have tried to give you the whole idea of the novel in this short discussion. Hope you have uh, followed me. So these are very important questions uh, which you can read and you can discuss, you can uh, take for granted. What are the number one? What kind of life was led by Marner during his early days at Ravlu? You can see there are two places uh, that has been uh, used again and again by the writer, Ravlu and Lantaniard, which are very important for you to understand. Why were people of Ravlu superstitious about him? Number two, why did Marner refuse the company of others and preferred to live alone? Why William Dane was not considered as religious man? Describing the life of uh, the life-changing experience of Marner at Lantern Yard, why was convicted of robbing Deacon's gold? Number four, whom would you like to be considered as a religious man and why? Discuss, that is, uh, is it uh, 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 Silas Marner? or the deacon who number six where did marner hide his money do you agree with this statement that this village life of red blue marner turned to be a greedy person if not then why last question what's meant by this statement silas's guineas were a golden wine this has been directly taken from quotation taken from the novel so what is your what is the interpretation of this so these are the questions that you will be very much thoroughly discussing with uh, you and with any partner. And uh, this is uh, the penultimate slide. That is, I'm going to conclude the slide. Dear students, I hope you have tried to follow me. And uh, one uh, last advice I would like to give you that whenever you follow my lecture, try to use a earphone or headphone or, or earpod. Uh, to get the clear pronunciation or phonetical uh, distinction that I have used in this uh, discussion or in this lecture, then you will get the clear idea of the novel. Uh, okay, that's all from me. And with this, I would like to thank you all for joining me and being with me. And uh, hope you will try to make a good use of the lecture that you have just seen. And uh, another day I will show you again. And until the goodbye, and thanks for now.